If you watch my channel, you know I've reviewed the Razor Blade Stealth 13 since its debut from a few years ago. I've actually reviewed each model ever since, and I was really curious to see how Razor would update it for late 2018 going into 2019. Actually, this is the 2019 model. I just took delivery of it, and there are a few upgrades that are worth noting. Number one, it has a lower resolution as far as the full HD resolution, but I think it's an actual improvement actually. And it also has an upgraded CPU. It's running the eighth generation Intel Whiskey Lake processor. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM. This one has the MX150 GPU. It's the 25 watt variant opposed to the 10 watt variant we've seen in the past. So let's see if this can actually do some gaming. Let's see what kind of performance we get out of it and what kind of battery life we'll get out of that Whiskey Lake processor. I'm really curious. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is the unboxing and first look of the Razor Blade Stealth 13 for 2019. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Well, why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification icon. This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. And don't forget to check me out on my social media, especially Twitter, because that's where I post all the latest updates. Okay, so the new Razer Blade Stealth 13 starts at $13.99. That's for the base model. There's a mid-tier model that comes in at $15.99 US. And of course, there's a 4K touch model that'll run you $18.99. Of course, this is not cheap, but I think you do get a lot of bang for the buck. We'll go over that in just a little bit. To me, the sweet spot is that mid-tier model. Now, here's a quick rundown of the specs. You get a 13.3-inch Full HD matte display. Of course, that optional 4K touch display is there if you want it at that extra price point. Now, it is powered by the quad-core 8th generation Intel Whiskey Lake processors. It's the Core i7-8565U, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. It's, by the way, soldered on. You cannot upgrade it yourself. And the model I have has the NVIDIA GeForce MX150. It's the 25 watt variant with four gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM. The mid-level model has 256 gigabytes of SSD storage and it also packs a 53.1 watt hour battery. We'll talk more about battery life and charging times in the full review. But enough with the specs, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now they give you a very compact 65 watt charger, the extension cable, and of course the unit itself is packaged in a separate box. Opening that lid, you're greeted by the unit itself and holding it for the first time feels really nice, feels very premium. We'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so in the box, you get some documentation, some warranty information, a thank you from Razer, as well as a cleaning cloth. You'll need that to wipe it down, although not as bad as previous models. You also get some stickers and you also get the unit itself and holding it for the first time. Wow, love that matte black finish, looks sleek, looks very high end. Now this is a bit more understated. This will fit in more in a business environment. Say you're in a boardroom meeting, this certainly will fit in. You won't have to worry about any glowing lights or any of the things to catch your attention. Before we get to the ports, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Wondershare, and their really excellent PDF software called PDF Element. Now, whether I'm using my Surface Pro 6 to annotate and edit PDFs or whether I'm using my Razer Blade Stealth 13, the laptop I'm reviewing today, I'm constantly having to edit those PDFs. Adding your handwritten signature to a contract is very easy as well as highlighting important facts, important sections of your PDF. It's available for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Right now, for a limited time, there's a 30% off discount for Christmas on the professional version. And that, to me, is a steal. I wouldn't hesitate on this one. It's really much cheaper than Adobe Professional, and you get a lot of the same features. And guess what? They're doing a countdown to Christmas advent calendar. So every day until Christmas, there's a special surprise. When I clicked on it, 40% off PDF Element. That's pretty cool. Hit the links below for more information and some great savings. On the left, the USB-C port, USB-A, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And on the right, you get a Thunderbolt 3 port that supports four lanes, and of course, a second USB-A port. Now that Thunderbolt 3 port supports four lanes, so if you want to connect to an external GPU, such as Razer's own Core V2, or any other eGPU, you have that option. But with this model, you may not need that because it has the MX150 GPU, the 25 watt variant. We'll get to that in just a little bit. 
Noticeably missing, no micro SD card or full size SD card slot, no storage expansion, which is a little bit of a bummer, but that's what we get nowadays. Now let's get to the display. Now this time around they're going with a full HD resolution that's 1920 by 1080, 13.3 inches, and you're looking at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Now the lower resolution doesn't really bother me because this is a very sharp full HD panel. You also save on battery life, where the other models in previous years were not getting great battery life because of that higher resolution QHD Plus display. This is a little bit better, we'll get to that in the full review in a little bit, we'll touch on that here later on. Now as far as the blacks they're very deep you get some really vibrant colors this is an excellent matte display now it is a matte display so you're not going to get that shiny glossiness you get on other panels that we've seen the 4k touch option will have a glossy panel so keep that in mind but i like the thin bezels we're looking at 4.9 millimeters on the sides you do have a bit of a chin on the top to house that camera for the webcam and you also have a chin on the bottom but overall design is much slimmer than previous models and i'm happy to see that now they're touting this as having 100% sRGB, so for those creative professionals, you wanna be interested in that. I will do my further testing in the full review to give you the numbers. But so far, initial impressions, 48 hours in, I'm very impressed with this matte Full HD display. It is really great. Now when it comes to the keyboard, once again, you get a chroma keyboard where the keys light up in different colors, although this time around, they're all uniform. They won't be individually lit keys as far as different colors are concerned. Here, you could either do one color at a time, and so that's a big change as well. But as far as tactile feedback, as far as feeling like you can type on this for extended periods of time, it was really good. I'm actually impressed with it. Now, as far as the trackpad is concerned, it uses precision drivers, and I have to say that trackpad is super responsive. I was really impressed with this trackpad, and I look forward to doing more testing with it coming in that full review. But so far, I'm impressed. Well, you're probably wondering, can you game on this thing? Well, the answer is yes, you can, although this is not a dedicated gaming laptop. There are better GPU options out there. But having said that, this MX150 25 watt version is certainly better than the 10 watt version we've seen in previous laptops. It also has more video RAM. This has four gigabytes of DDR5 RAM as opposed to say two as you'd get in other laptop options. So that will definitely help as far as gaming is concerned. And check out some of these numbers as far as frames per second on some of the more popular titles. I will be doing more gaming testing in that full review. Now, I was expecting a better multi-core score in the Geekbench 4 test, but I think things were running in the backgrounds, updates were downloading, things were happening. So I'm going to retest this and let you know when I post my full review, but a little bit disappointing in that multi-core score. Now, as far as the MX150, this is how it did on the OpenCL score, a definite improvement over the built-in graphics, that's for sure. Now I thought thermal management on this device so far has been pretty good when I put it under heavy load. It really didn't get overly hot, so that's pretty good. And I think that's due to the fact that it has two fans in this ultra portable. Now opening the bottom lid is pretty easy on this device. All you have to do is remove all the torque screws around the bottom plate remove the bottom plate, and you're in. Now, here's what you can upgrade in this device. Unfortunately, the RAM is soldered on, so you won't be able to upgrade that RAM, but you can change out the SSD, and you can change out the Wi-Fi card if you so choose. And speaking of the SSD, really good reads, decent writes, not great. I thought I would see some better writes on this, but not bad at all. So overall, speeds have been pretty good. Another area of improvement is in the sound. You now get quad speakers on this device as opposed to the dual speakers you got in previous models. It gives you more immersive sound, and I thought it gets pretty loud, and the sound was very good. Now let's hear it in action to give you a sample of just how it sounds. So this is the front-facing camera on the new Razorblade Stealth 2019. 
Uh, it's a 720p, 30 frames per second. It's okay. Let me know what you think about it. I think it will definitely get the job done. Skype, video conferencing, it will definitely do the job. But again, I want to know what you think. Let me know. And that front-facing camera is Windows Hello compatible, so logging in with face recognition is definitely an option for you. It worked really well, setup was easy, and registered my face pretty much every time I used it. So far, battery's actually looking pretty good. Now, Razer's claiming 13 hours of battery life. I did run a web surfing test that I normally do. I'm seeing nine and a half hours. I will do more extensive testing coming soon, and I will compare it to its competition. So stay tuned for that. So what do you think about the Razer Blade Stealth 13? First of all, I love the way it looks. I think this matte black finish is really nice, although it will show some fingerprints, although not as bad as the previous model that I checked out, but it will show fingerprints nonetheless. Now, I'm really impressed with the Core i7-8565U. That's the Whiskey Lake processor. I will have to do further testing as far as performance, but I like the fact that it also has the MX150, the 25 watt version, so you're getting a little bit bump in terms of performance in as far as the graphics are concerned. Uh, you can do some video editing on this. So you can definitely do 1080p. 4K video editing, I would leave for the big boys. I would go something with a more robust uh, GPU, not something like the MX150, even though it is the 25 watt variant. But as far as gaming is concerned, you can do it. This is not a gaming laptop, as I stated, but if you wanna play the occasional games on the lower settings, this definitely can get the job done. Battery life is so far looking good, 48 hours in. I'm seeing pretty decent battery life. The display, by the way, is looking really good. I have the Full HD non-touch model. It's a matte display, which I'm a huge fan of. It looks crisp, it looks sharp, and it really is a very nice Full HD panel. So I'm really happy so far with it. They're claiming 100% sRGB. I'm seeing about 75, 76% Adobe RGB. So for those creative professionals, this is certainly good enough. Now, as far as the thermals are concerned, I will get into that in the full review, but so far, all looking good. I like the fact that it has the dual fans on the back, as you see here. If there are some parts you could upgrade. One thing that is not upgradable, as, you, as I stated, is the RAM, so keep that in mind. But I look forward to putting it through its paces, really putting it through the ringer to see how it comes out. But so far, I'm really liking this new Razor Blade Cell 13 for 2019, but I'm curious to know what you think let me know. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.